Hey guys, Professor Brett Contreras here. Uh, I realize I never really discussed an article I got published in uh, the SCJ, the Strength and Conditioning Journal this year. The title was, Are All Hip Extension Exercises Created Equal? And so, uh, this was a very cool paper that got published, and I wanted to take the, the, uh, the time to explain the article for those of you who aren't able to download it. If you are uh, an NSCA member, then you'll have access to the journal. You should pull it up. I'll provide a link in my blog post um, about this where I embed this video. But uh, anyway, the whole uh, question of the article is, are all hip extension exercises created equal? So uh, what I did was I picked three different uh, hip extension exercises that most strength coaches would feel are kind of the same because they're the same movement pattern. The horizontal back extension, the 45 degree back extension, and then the good morning exercise. Every one of those involves bending at the hips and straightening out. So they're all three different hip extension exercises and the legs remain relatively straight. Uh, so they're straight leg hip extension exercises. Sure, in the good morning they'll bend a little more, uh, the knees will bend a little more, but the whole point is these are different exercises but they're from different vectors. Um, and so uh, I kind of illustrated here the different uh, position. So this would be a, the bottom of a good morning and then the top of the good morning, you know, would be like that. So this is the bottom where you're bent in half and then you stand up. The 45 degree hyper, this is the bottom and then you would raise the torso up and end up like that. And then the horizontal back extension, you start out like this and then you end up out here. So if you think about doing these exercises, just use common sense from what you know about doing them. The good morning, you're standing here with a bar like this, this is easy, okay? You can hang out here all day. Then you bend over, it becomes harder and harder and harder. The hardest point is at the very bottom, then you stand back up. Um, so the hardest part is at the bottom. Think about the horizontal back extension. Um, if you're in a horizontal back extension, you go to the bottom, you can just hang out there all day. Sure, it might be stretching your hamstrings, but it's not that hard. But then you come up to the top, Especially if you're holding load, it becomes very difficult. So the hardest point is at the top of a horizontal back extension. So uh, those are flip-flops of each other. So basically what I did was I took a, a six-foot tall guy. I just made a, a hypothetical reference uh, athletic individual. He's six-foot tall, okay, uh, weighs 200 pounds, and uh, uses 100 pounds ex external resistance. So picture a guy who's six feet tall, weighs 200 pounds, uh, athletic looking dude, and he's using 100 extra pounds resistance for these exercises. And he's going to do a, a good morning, a back extension, and a 45 degree hyper. Well, if you can calculate the hip, the, uh, hip extension torque, it's pretty easy to do so. All you're doing is um, you have to create the, calculate the hip extension torque, uh, the instantaneous hip extension torque of the torso itself and then of the, the weight. And basically, you've got like a, you know, a, a, a lever arm, the distance from like the load to the hip joint, and then you've got a load, and you just multiply the load times that lever arm and to get the torque. And then you add up the torque imposed by the torso itself, or the, actually the head, arms, and trunk, and then you add up, add that to the torque imposed by the load, you've got your hip extension torque. So here's what happened. Here, I'm... Um, Here's a graph. On the y-axis, I have hip extension torque, which is measured in newton meters. And on the x-axis, I have the hip joint angle, which is in degrees. Here I have 90 degrees, 135 degrees, and 180 degrees. So the 90 degree position is this bent over position. The 135 degrees, so 90 degrees is bent over completely. 135 is right here, 180 right here. So uh, basically, what we talked about earlier, the hardest part of the good morning, so let's plot the good morning first. The hardest part of the good morning was at 90 degrees, at the very bottom, at a hip joint angle of 90 degrees. That actually imposed 478 newton meters of torque out at the hips. Okay, when you got to 135 degrees, now it's at 338 newton meters of torque. And then when you get to 180 degrees, which you're standing straight up, there's no torque at the hips. The bar is centered right over the hips, so when you're standing like this, there's no torque output, so it's like this. 
Okay, so you connect these and you get something that looks like this. Okay, now I'm going to do the horizontal back extension. Well, we talked about when you're at the bottom of a back extension, that's the easiest position. There's no torque, you're just hanging out, there's no load on the hips. Okay, when you get halfway up, you're at 338, and when you reach full extension, you are now at the hardest part, which is 478. So you plot these, and it looks like that. Notice that these are complete inverses of one another. They kind of form an X. So the, the torque angle curves, this is a torque angle curve that I'm uh, creating. The torque angle curves of the good morning and the back extension are inverses of one another. And here's what's interesting. The 45 degree hyper, if you notice, the hardest position for the 45 degree hyper is actually going to be right here, because this is where the load is furthest out from the hip joint. From here to here, and from here to here, is not as much distance, if that makes sense. So the hardest part of the 45 degree hyper is actually right here in the 135 degree angle position, but at the bottom and at the top, you're getting 338. So this curve looks like this. Okay, so what in the world does this mean? Well, my very good friend Brad Schoenfeld, he wrote an article uh, three years ago that was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research called uh, Mechanisms of Muscle Hypertrophy and Their Application to Resistance Training. A very good article. What he proposed was hypertrophy has three aspects to it. Um, kind of the, the mechanisms, three primary mechanisms that create hypertrophy. One of them is mechanical tension. And this is probably the most important. The second one is metabolic stress. And the third one is muscle damage. Okay? So these are the three primary mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. Well, what exercises creates the most mechanical tension here? All three of them have the same peak tensions, just at different ranges of motion. Well, if you know anything about gluteus maximus EMG, you will know that you actually get higher glute maximus, gluteus maximus activation at end range hip extension compared to when you're bent over. So the back extension will give you higher glute activation just because when you're standing up, if you squeeze the glutes as hard as possible, you will actually get higher glute activation than when you're bent over and you flex. Like if you did squat all the way down, squeeze your glutes, your glutes won't activate as high as when you're standing up squeezing your glutes. The glutes are, um, you know, neurologically more efficient standing up or full hip extension. So for the glutes, what gives you the most peak tension for the glutes? It's going to be the back extension exercise right here. So this is going to be the best exercise for peak tension on the glutes. All right, if we uh, look at the hamstrings though, the biggest load on the hamstrings is going to be when you're bent over stretched and that's going to be the good morning right here. And if you think about it, the good morning, when you bend over and you're at the bottom, that's going to create the most muscle damage because you're stretching the muscle under heavy eccentric load. And so, if you want to create muscle damage to the hamstrings, you're going to do the good morning. If you want to create mechanical tension for the glutes, you're going to do the back extension. But think about this. Which exercise here has the most mean torque, the most mean torque, the most average torque, if you look at these curves, the 45 degree hyper here, it never drops to zero. There's always a load, and if you've ever done the 45 degree hyper, you know that you have constant tension on those hamstrings. You get a big burn in the glutes and hamstrings when you do these. So the 45 degree hyper is going to be the best for the most constant tension because, you know, the, you're always under load. The hips are always under load, and so blood never has a chance to escape. If blood can't escape because the muscles keep contracting, the blood builds up and you get, a, a, you get metabolic stress. So what's the best exercise for metabolic stress? Probably the 45 degree hyper. So the 45 degree hyper best for metabolic stress. The good morning is the best for 
uh, muscle damage, and the back extension is probably the best for mechanical tension. So, what does this mean? Are all hip extensions exercise created equal? No, they're not. They're very different depending on their torque angle curves. These are the same movement pattern. It's straight leg hip extension, but they have very unique torque angle curves and they have different potential applications. Now this is just hypothetical at this point, but I suspect that if you, uh, that the exercise that would give you the most glute hypertrophy would probably be the back extension or the 45 degree back extension. The exercise that would probably give you the most hamstring hypertrophy, I'm not sure, it might be the good morning, but what's interesting about uh, exercises that create muscle damage, such as the good morning, when you bend over and kind of stretch the muscle under heavy load and it has a big eccentric load because it's stretched, you actually uh, create, that, that muscle damage you create actually induces sarcomerogenesis, sarcomeres in series, and it can increase fascicle length. And when you increase fascicle length, you have more rapid muscle contractions. And so when you think about a, an exercise like sprinting, right before the foot touches the ground, the hamstrings are at a long muscle length. The glutes are at a short muscle length at ground contact. So you want the hamstrings strong at long muscle lengths. You want the glutes strong at short muscle lengths for sprinting. So the good morning would be a great exercise for you know, the hammies. The back extension, a great exercise for the glutes. And the 45 degree hyper is kind of the in-between. The 45, so the good morning strengthens, strengthens the bottom portion the best. The 45 degree hyper, the middle portion the best, and the back extension, the end portion the best. So, again, uh, I thought this was a very important article. It's the first article of its kind. It's the only article that I've seen that addresses this stuff. It is cutting edge biomechanics uh, married to, uh, you know, hypertrophy research. And that's why Brad and I get along so well, because my research and his research go hand in hand. So... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the article, I hope you, or the, uh, the video, I hope you learned something. Uh, please remember to go to the blog and check it out, because I will uh, jot down, a, I'll, I'll include the link and jot down some info about it. Thank you very much for watching.